grandmother was Judith A. Bassett. She was a dog behaviorist, a dog trainer, a dog breeder, and her specialty was dogs that were going to be euthanized because they had some behavioral issue. And she had a way of getting through to these animals, turned them into loving dogs that had a great life. When she passed away, we had already had foxes, and we decided to name the center in her honor. We want to do things that people haven't done before or haven't thought of. We started looking at getting the Russian domesticated foxes. I think it was about six or seven years ago. And we can now explore these Russian domesticated foxes for utility work. A very obvious difference between a dog and a fox. Dogs generally don't like to defecate in their own space. Foxes seem to enjoy defecating everywhere and anywhere. Yeah, you can train them to poop in a litter box, but then they'll sleep in their litter box too. Dogs would never ever do that. It's just not in their nature. And so that's less desirable as, as home companions. They will either pretend like they don't hear you or they might come over, but if you have a tree. So if I had a piece of cheese, which is Boris's favorite, he was my best friend. Um, but the weird thing is, is if you had a piece of cheese, you could train them to do something in a millisecond. You remove that tree and you got nothing. They pretend like you don't even exist. So they're much more like a cat in that component where they come up to you and when they want to, but when they're done, they're done. And then they, they go away. With the Russian foxes, there's a lot of interest in the genetics of these, these animals because it turns out a lot of these genes that are make a fox friendly are similar to genes in people that are deficient when people have autism and is there any way that this could lead to potential better therapies for for a lot of these social bonding disorders children with autism spectrum disorder tend to gravitate towards dogs so you have a child um, with autism and you have a read to dogs program where they start to read to the dog and let's say you start out with uh, just a regular uh, rescue um, German Shepherd or Golden Retriever or whatever um, and they and they read and they feel more comfortable the focus of that is is not just reading comprehension but uh, improving their social skills and then you do a stepwise. So then you put in a Nuggety singing dog that's not going to give them the instant gratification of the bonding that is so easily seen in a golden retriever. So they have to work a little bit harder. And then you give them, let's say, a Russian or a regular fox, a ranch-raised fox or a Russian domesticated fox. And so, you know, that is not only is it a novel uh, wanted, so they're highly motivated because they want to play with a fox, but it's also something that they do have the capacity to, if they work hard enough, they get that moment of gratification when the fox comes over and licks their hand, if they improve their social skills. So that's one of the programs that we're working on is incorporating some of our unique canids into the social, social bonding disorders. Um, one of the other uh, genetic programs that we're working on is something called Williams syndrome, where it's actually a, a condition where people have, they're overly friendly almost. There's other, problems, medical conditions that they have related to it, but these are kids that will go up and hug everybody. Um, so there are research that are looking at the genetics of both the New Guinea singing dogs and the, the Russian foxes. So I think it'll be very fascinating to see what genes these guys have and the variation in the genes. We have about 10 acres here. Um, and it's very designed very much like the San Diego Zoo where there's trails um, and so it'd be really nice to have a much more natural path um, for the animals and then to be able to do hikes and walks here. I'd love to be able to have you know, overnight camping as well where kids can come and then to really make this center something that the world can use um, to better understand that healing power of canids. But it takes a lot to really create um, the structures here that we really need to, to truly house and to truly um, do the programs that we need to do. So we need funding, we need visibility. So having folks like you guys come out and ask us what we're doing and what we're all about and getting the word out is, is really helpful. You know, one of our things is, is that canid conservation or animal conservation, there's no ego in it. So this isn't about me or it's not about Dave and it's not about what we want out of life. It's about what we can do for them and about giving back to them. So it's about all of us sacrificing because they deserve better.